Hello, welcome back to Furious Driving, and this potentially could be the last time we see the V8 before it starts. Well, this might even be the time it starts. I'm filming this before the rest of the video, so I genuinely don't know how it's going to end. So you're, I'm as excited as you are. Possibly more so, as I've got more vested interest in this. Right, but I will apologise first of all for not putting any workshop videos out this week, but it's been really frantic with my, my day job basically, and I've not had any time to get out to the garage. And also, I've been waiting to get a couple of things in the post. First of all, this very, very perished falling apart rubber pipe is now gone. A new one has arrived, so I can fit that in a second. That's a work of a moment. Secondly, I've been waiting for a solution to my alternator pulley not being in the right place. I think I've figured that one out as well. Um, there are different kinds of alternator pulleys depending on the application. And this one, I've not actually not measured it, it's literally just arrived in the post and I haven't measured it up against the car yet. But I think that will move that into a still slightly back, but I think with a washer that will be about right. And a couple of people did say, is that fan pulley on the water pump on back to front. It looks like it's on the same way as it was before because there are marks in the thing, but potentially I could do it. I will try it as well. But I haven't been resting on my laurels whilst I've been waiting for stuff to arrive. I've finally figured out the throttle link, the throttle linkage, where is it? It's down there. Um, I was doing some scouting around the garage to try and figure out how on earth I could make this thing fit together. And I think I mentioned in the last video that I had this other linkage and I was thinking, oh my gosh, have I put the wrong linkage in the car? No, I hadn't. It's all bolted in. There are attachments you can't undo. This is not it. This is from the Rover 2000 because for a short time, the Rover 2000 ran with a different car because I ran it with a 2.2 litre engine for a time when I was overhauling the uh, two litre when I first had the car. And this is from that, that period of time. And that's where the confusion came in. But fortunately, that came with a slide on a little bit of tube that kind of extended it and had holes pre-drilled in it uh, so it could be linked together and I realized that this is the same diameter as the one on the V8 so I was able to cut a length of this tube down to the right length and make a connector so this is now in the right place and rigid unfortunately it is temporarily held together with a very small pop rivet because I don't have a correct size split pin to hold it at the moment. Next time I go shopping, I'll, I'll acquire some. So now the throttle does actually work. That is one more thing crossed off the list. Um, but what I need to do now is, of course, get that alternator pulley sorted out, um, finally connect those uh, oil cooler pipes from the transmission to the radiator because otherwise it's going nowhere. Oh, one more thing. I was lucky enough to borrow this from Nitro Sylvia. This is, believe it or not, an oil pump priming tool. You lift out the distributor, put a power drill on this, spin this thing up as fast as it will go, basically on a power drill, because quite a lot of resistance on that, and that will then prime the oil system before we start. All good stuff. Right, so first of all, I'm gonna whip off the alternator yet again. It seems like the 19th time the alternator's been on and off and on and off. Um, luckily, it's kind of finger tight now, because I've just been not trusting it's gonna stay where it lives. Um, because it'd be easier to change this pulley in the vice. And also it would give me a bunch more room to go and work on those um, all the, the coolant pipes. Free again. All right, just popping this thing off, trying to lay around. Yeah, it does look like it's a better lineup actually on the, uh, on the crank pulley, so maybe you guys were right. I say maybe, you guys were definitely right. It's funny, it looked completely different how it looked before though. I don't know how clear this is, but that's actually a much better lineup between the crank pulley now and the water pump pulley. So uh, hopefully that'll be a nicer, nicer run through. Maybe that's why it kept throwing belts in the old three and a half if that was the wrong way around before. <coughs> well, this is all the fun in the world. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure you can even see what I'm looking at here. This is all the fun in the world. This one oops, appears to be too long to go on to either. Oh, it just about goes on there. The other one, though, is coming up too short. They both snake around beside the oil sump and go up to the uh, front of the transmission pan. I don't know if that's been bent awkwardly, and that's why it's not going in the right place. Maybe I need to bend that a little bit. Ow. 
Ah, oh, damn me. Oops. Right, let's have a look underneath this to try and find those oil pipes. And this is the most awkward thing in the world. That's the water pipe access for the radiator. And those below it are the two, you can see one of them. Um, there you go. Oil cooler lines for the transmission into the radiator. But one of them seems just about the right length. But the other one though, I think might be slightly bent maybe in storage. Cause it seems to be coming up a bit short. So let's see if I can bend this back into shape. Done. It is a massive faff doing up those little bolts or whatever connector thingies on the bottom. They are so much aggro to get down to, but once they're in, they're in. I think just basically um, was that where the pipes have been in storage for about a year or so on the floor under the workbench, they've taken a knock or two and been slightly misshapen. That's why they weren't going on. Now they're in. Hurrah. Now that little water pipe to our access is infinitely easier if you take the distributor out, because it really is impossible to get on otherwise. Let's not forget to put on a couple of hose clamps, otherwise that will be a rather damp situation we have in the engine bay before too long. Done! Right, now, access has been my constant issue, so as well as taking that distributor off, I also had to take out the uh, hose for the radiator coolant while I was trying to do the uh, transmission lines. So, I can go back on again. Right, so I've got the uh, alternator in the vise on the bench, I have got, if I can find it, the big 75 centimeter uh, cracking things off thing, or I can use the uh, ratchet impact thingy. I might give the big old breaker bar a try, just because. Oh, you yeah, know, it worked. Huh, that was easy. There's a link to these in the description below and to them as well. Both fantastic tools. It's nice to have the option sometimes. I put a link to the vise as well because that's also extremely handy. Okay, that's oh, uh, that's a lot smaller. I hadn't realised that. Hopefully that will still charge okay. Oh, it doesn't come out any further. Oh. Oh dear. Hang on. So it's got about two millimetres gap. And that's got... Maybe three millimetres gap. Several ugger duggers. I'll tell you a funny story while we're down here. Years and years ago, when this was running on the three and a half litre, and it was running okay, but only just, we went to a car show in Lincolnshire. We're driving up the A14, and we're just coming up towards the Cambridge services, and Mrs. Ferris said, shall we stop and have a cup of tea? And I said, no, the car's running really well. Let's keep going, and at that moment, everything died. The engine, the lights, the dials, the lot. So I coasted in, knocked into neutral, coasted into the petrol station at Cambridge Services, spent a while looking at what the problem was, couldn't figure it out. Called the AA, he spent like an hour and a half trying to figure out why there was no power, because he could see the belt on the alternator and the belt on the water pump. Couldn't work out what it was. Eventually, he realised that the belt had come off the uh, crank pulley, because this thing threw belts all the time for some reason. And so he started it up for us and we got going again. And on the way home, we're driving home and the alternator pulley fell off. And I actually saw it and heard it, well, heard it crackle under the bonnet and I saw it bounce down the road. And I managed to stop the car and chase the pulley, this pulley I think it would have been, into a ditch and find it. Unfortunately, a guy in a Jaguar E-Type um, was following and he lent me the right spanner to repair it and said, hang on to the spanner, post it to me when you get back, which is the wonderful thing about the classic car community. Everyone is so nice and friendly. So anyway, this has been giving me grief for many years. I never did find those two missing ARP manifold studs, so luckily I do have a spare engine. It's not got shiny ARP bolts under here, but they are manifold studs nonetheless that will do the trick. So where I am now, it's kind of terrifying, because all I need to do is add fluids Prime the pump, set the timing, and it should go. I'm a bit scared actually. Right, first of all, this is Miller's Oil's running in oil, um, which is just to be used for the first 500 miles or so of use because it's got different additives. I guess it's more cushioning on everything, more oily oil. 
This stuff is actually slightly hard to find uh, because it's not something that everyone uses every day in Halfords, for example, certainly you don't carry it. Uh, there's a, a place called Turner's Engineering down in Surrey or Sussex, uh, kind of towards Godstone-ish in uh, Surrey. And they have it. Oh, I'm trying to flick oil too far across the, ro the room. That's went to my tea, brilliant. Great. I'm not going to be all fancy and one-handed with this time and I'm actually going to use a funnel because this is my shiny new engine. This is the first time this engine has had oil in it since it's been rebuilt, which is quite an exciting moment. I mean, I know there are various things that still need to be done to this car to make it actually roadworthy, but actually having it running would be amazing. Uh, the power steering pump I've basically ignored. I cannot figure out how on earth that's meant to fit back together because this is an SD1 front end on a P6. I did look at an SD1, um, but it's got air conditioning on it, and that made it totally different, so that was no good. And uh, a couple of the uh, bolts from the exhaust manifolds into the downpipes don't fit. I'm gonna have to take those off and re-drill them to make them fit properly, but it'll do for a startup. That radiator just there, that's got a flappy top on it, but I want to get an aluminium radiator for this thing, but I don't wanna go and chuck tons of money out if I've just <laughs> not put a running engine, I'd like to get the engine running before I go and chuck any more money at it. And once it is running, I'm going to upgrade these twin SUs for a proper sort of Holly Edelbrock kind of setup. Make the whole thing an awful lot more powerful because it's got the crower cam in there. I need to go and double check how long this needs to be uh, run for and at what revs. It's, I think it's 20 minutes at 2000 RPM. I'm going to double check that before I, before I turn the key. I suspect I might have to go and steal a battery out of something else as well because I think this battery is toast in this car. Right, that's that's all gone. Oh, didn't last long. That's another another 25 quid on the bill. So one of the greatest additions I've done to this garage in recent months is to stick a bungee across this top member thing, RSJ, with some blue roll rolls in it. It's brilliant. Next up, I'm gonna pull a rocker cover off just so I can see that the oil pump is doing its thing and it is sending oil up into the upper reaches of the engine. Whoops. I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't be, apart from the fact that I built it. And I then modified it using a modification kit for a high flow oil pump. And then I fitted a, a P6 or possibly SD1 oil pump to a Range Rover V8. So apart from those reasons, there's no reasons why it shouldn't work. The common factor of unreliability in all of those scenarios is me. God, it's amazing how dirty this engine has managed to get in just a few months sitting here in the garage, not doing anything. Oops. Oh, I've screwed that to that. Ah. Ah, stubby screwdrivers. Luckily, I bought some new stubby screwdrivers the other day. Otherwise I'd have been stuffed trying to do that. I won't lose that because those that screw is hard to find. Okay, so out comes the distributor. Okay, now in goes the special tool. Now, if you've not seen one of these before, what it is, this is made by Nitro Sylvia. Um, thanks James for the loan of this thing. Uh, the drive for the distributor comes off, and where's the distributor, I'll show you this. If you've not seen one of these, this will make more sense. Ah, this is the distributor. This gear wheel drives off the front of the camshaft. So <laughs> that's what spins the distributor around and around. In the bottom of that, there is a little tooth, a key, if you like, which drives, let's not dangle that off that, which drives a little peg in the top of the oil filter. This replicates that by being a little square box section that James made up. Sits on that little peg. Oh, except it doesn't because this is the other way around on this one. Ah, oh, this is on this engine, the slot. This is reversed, male, female is reversed. I'm gonna have to find something different. Oh, so I have made 
a, a rotatey tool driver thingy for the oil pump. Um, it's an old extension bar for the small size of sockets. I forgot what number of fractions they're going to be. Uh, that will now fit into the. Um, can I focus in there? Can I let me see in there? No, it's too dark. It will let me attach in there, but that will not let me turn the pump at all. I don't know why it's so solid. It was turning so easily by hand before I put it in the car. I don't know why it's now not turning easily by hand. Okay, I just had a massive dolt oh moment and a massive oh no moment because two things happened. First of all, because the oil pump was not turning, I was thinking maybe something's jammed up. So I've got a, a socket wrench on the crank pulley. I haven't taken the fan out, obviously, which is not there now. Turning over, watching these go up and down. Everything seems to be turning quite smoothly, but the oil pump wasn't turning. And I was thinking, oh man, what's broken? Then it were a dull realization. It's not got the distributor in there, so it won't return any oil pump. It's nothing broken, it's moving stupid. Then I thought I'll give it one more go with the homemade <coughs> oil pump turning tool. This old um, extension bar thingy. And I was just trying to give it a little bit of pressure with a very gently with a, a socket wrench. And the, you know that kind of horrible feeling when something just changes pressure completely unexpectedly and you know something bad's happened. I lifted it out and the end, the tag, tang off the end of it had gone. And I got my torch off my phone and I looked in there the camera wasn't running for this, it would have been great material. Uh, luckily, it was still sitting in the groove at the top of the oil pump and it hadn't fallen into the engine. Because I, <laughs> I was thinking for a second, I'm going to have to take the entire front of the engine off again. Um, and fortunately, the magnetic pickup tool uh, picked it up and I was able to save the situation without being too much of a disaster. Now, I've just put the distributor back in there and I'm just going to give this a quick turn. And looking at this handbook over here, this should turn clockwise so hang on yes okay that is turning it's just very very stiff okay that's good news okay so I'll stop doing that I'll pull this back out again and I'll go back to looking for something to turn that with I was worried that that was jammed up it appears it's just as I say very very stiff okay so at this point I do now have a whole new interesting problem which means the car is not going to be starting this weekend which I'm really disappointed about. I even have that new hose just there thinking that was the last thing I need to be buying but I've just taken the distributor out again and uh, tried to turn it with a big solid screwdriver head on a fairly you know, chunky sizable bit of force and it's not turning at all. The oil pump is locked solid and I don't know why because I've been testing this at every stage during the build. Everything I've been doing, I've been testing it as I've been going, putting the next bit on, testing it again, putting the next bit on, testing it again. So everything should be working. Um, so I don't know why this is not turning at all. It seemed to be working when I fitted it. It's packed solid with, with um, uh, Vaseline. I don't know if Vaseline, that doesn't go solid over time. It's been a few months since I actually fitted that oil pump, but I don't think that should be a problem. That should uh, stay in its Vaseline-y state pretty much forever. So I'm, I don't know. I think what I'm gonna to have to do now is take the oil pump off the front of the engine again, which is gonna be really hard to do now, which means taking the radiator out again, and uh, yeah, then taking the oil pump off and seeing why it won't turn. Also, I have noticed while I've been looking at this, the distributor is not sitting down quite far enough against the engine. The uh, bottom little tag is, well, one O-ring higher than the engine itself. There's a gap, I'll try and get a picture of this with my phone because it's really hard to see. I can then show you this. So that is why the distributor is not so that is why to the oil pump. The distributor is not However, locking in to the oil pump. However, I don't know why that is. So now I need to get under here take off the oil filter, or maybe leave the oil filter on possibly, slacken off the five bolts that hold the oil pump on and see then if I can turn that or not. But that's a job for later. Access is what you might call limited to that. I can't even see it from the side, but there are five bolts holding on. If I just loosen them off, hopefully it will turn. I thought I was here. I thought I'd be starting the car today. 
I even went and bought myself a bottle of, uh, this is what did it, this is what jinxed it. I went and bought a bottle of ATFG. This is the non-dextron old fashioned type of automatic transmission fluid. So that on the off chance it started, I could then pour some in there and make the thing roll out the garage on its own. But that's not gonna happen today. Question is now, do I continue myself or do I ship this off to a professional classic car garage who can start make it start for me without risking anything? Because at the moment there is a risk that something could destroy the engine pretty instantly really and that would be a bad thing uh, i think i'm going to go and ask a few people who know stuff if i've got any ideas before i decide to do an, or commit to do anything else well this is turning into a bit of a head scratcher when i didn't want it to be i wanted it to be the nice fun finish of the project almost but uh, yeah but looking at the analytics and the statistics of this channel i know a good 50 percent of you people watching this program this video right now are not subscribers if you haven't subscribed you won't see how it ends you won't see this car running in the end so if you haven't hit that subscribe button then do please hit that right now then you can find out how this story finally concludes uh, whether it's going to conclude right now for this video i don't know i'm going to assume it will be and say goodbye and i'll see you next time I might come out again in an hour or so's time and do a bit more, but I suspect this is it for, the, for this video and you'll be watching this in a few hours time wondering what I'm doing next, as will I. See you later.